Today, I want to share with you a little bit of a pep talk, um, but I, I want to talk to you about a struggle that was very difficult and, and still at times can be very difficult. And I know some of you go, difficult now, like you've been in recovery so many years, there's difficult times now. Well, here's what's difficult for me. Um, I hate to be encumbered by anything. I hate to have discomfort. I hate things to not go well. Um, today, I want to talk to you about why are we surprised when things are hard. Um, recovery is hard. Life is hard. Being a betrayed spouse, being willing to forgive someone who has gone to be with another is really damn hard. This is real life. And I don't know why we are surprised that the recovery process is hard, and not only hard, but at times excruciating. But me, just in life now, whether it be in business, whether it be in helping people, whether it be in raising kids, whether it be in finances, and how are we going to pay for this, I get mad when things are hard. I just do. I expect that because I am living right, and as some would say from you know, the Christian community, I'm walking in the light, and I'm not mocking that. It's just that I think because I'm doing right, things should be easy. It's not. Nothing about raising kids is easy, although there's awesome times. Nothing about recovery is easy, although there's some wonderful times. Nothing about trying to raise good, healthy, strong children and preserve your marriage. Nothing about it is easy. It's possible, absolutely. And thank God for my marriage and thank God for my kids. But I'll tell you, I just have this problem. When things go wrong, I am surprised. Now, if you're coming from the agnostic or atheist uh, perspective, I want to help you because I know a lot of you don't subscribe to faith, and that's cool. I'm, I'm just glad that you're watching the blog. How do you rectify? How do you make this work? The fact is, is that anything that is going to be important, I have learned, this is just for me, anything that's going to change the world, change your family, change your life, change your bloodline, is just not going to be easy. I can't find a manual anywhere that says it's going to be easy. You talk to veterans who have l lost limbs or, or lost their lives doing what is right, and we struggle to find meaning out of it. We struggle to look at that and say, but what they were doing was right. How could they have suffered so much? But I'll tell you, suffering is part of life. And we have to find a way to find meaning in the suffering that we go through. And I'll tell you, one of the ways to find meaning if you don't subscribe to faith is the fact that you have the opportunity to change your family, change your bloodline, to see your children develop stronger lives than maybe your own. You have the opportunity to see your children be, come out better than maybe you did because they were raised by a family that's together. Or maybe, unfortunately, if there's a divorce, they're able to be raised by a mom or a dad that, although are divorced, incredibly love them and have created a safe environment for them despite going through a traumatic divorce. If you're a Christian or subscribe to faith in any way, I'll tell you, if there's a God, there's a devil. And as much as God loves you and cares for you and wants the ultimate best for you, there's a devil that hates you, despises you, and wants to do everything he can to uproot your recovery. I'll never forget, I was talking to one of my mentors early on, and, and everything was just crap. I would say something different, but you get the drift. It was just hard. Every single thing was hard. And, and I'll never forget, he looked at me and he said, where did you get the belief that this was going to be easy? You're trying to change your family. You're trying to change yourself. You're trying to preserve the most important relationship in your kids' lives and your own, and it's hard as hell. Where did you get the belief that it was, just gonna, it was just gonna fall into place? So we come to this point where we land at a real crux of recovery, if you will. 
And you want to know who Samantha was angry as all get out at? Besides me? Mm. She was angry at, at what was considered one of her best friends that I had had an affair with. But you know who she was really incredibly angry with? God. You want to talk about irony. Lay in bed with your wife who you've betrayed while she bawls because she's not just angry at you, because she's angry at God as well for allowing it to happen. It's an incredible, difficult place to try and bring together. I mean, I'm struggling for the words now to try and describe it. It's incredibly painful. And we shake our fist at God, especially as a betrayed spouse, and we say, how could you let this happen? You could have prevented this, and you could have stopped this, and we direct our anger at God, and I'll tell you, it's tough. You're not going to get any judgment here. I'm just telling you. I was mad at God that he allowed me to do it, and I was mad at God for this and that. I mean, it's a real deal. It's real life, man. And we don't have a ton of time today, and I'm going to probably have to continue some thoughts on this because I'm kind of getting into a place I don't want to leave you hanging, but here's the reality. You don't know the end of the story by the beginning, and you don't know the end of the story by the middle, and right now you don't know what's going to happen. You can't tell me you do. You don't have a crystal ball, and you're not God. You may want to remember that, unfaithful. The fact is you just don't know, and I didn't know. And one of the things that kept Samantha going was sitting with Rick, bawling her eyes out, talking about how angry at God she was, and then talking about how angry she was at me, and I was the very person that was trying to comfort her at her anger at God. How do you make that work? What a crock of crap that is. But we found a way. And I'll tell you, you just don't know right now what's going to happen. Samantha tells the story, and I'll end with this, that, man, looking back, it was the best thing that ever happened to us. And I know some of you just threw up, and you thought, what? <sighs> Indulge me, but God took what was supposed to be the worst thing that could ever happen to her and that ever happened to me and used it to be the best thing that's ever happened to me and ever happened to her because our family is stronger, our marriage is stronger. We've experienced healing like we never thought we could experience. But we had to go somewhere that nobody really wants to go. There's a quote I want to read you. Paul Tripp said this. He said, and, and for those of you that don't maybe subscribe to faith, we'll use the word love. But um, for those that subscribe to faith, I'll, I'll tell you, it's the, it's the, the belief and the trust and the, the security of God. And basically, God or love will take us where we haven't intended to go to achieve what we couldn't achieve on our own. There's something at play here. There's something at work here. But you can't live in the moment of the pain. You've got to be present, but you've got to know that you don't know what's coming, in your, way, coming your way. And what might be coming your way is the greatest breakthrough that you've ever seen. But I promise you, it will not be easy.